Hi, I'm Mike Johnston, and I'm the author of Confessions of a Dork Lord. Curious what it's about? I'll tell you. Meet Wick. He's the son of the Dark Lord, heir to the throne of black and broken glass, and next in line to be leader of the Grim World. Too bad he's stuck in meridial spellcasting. He's allergic to fire and brimstone, and the bullies at school insist on calling him the Dork Lord. How can Wick fulfill his great and terrible destiny if he can barely even survive Middle Ages school? Let's find out today by joining Wick at school on Moan Day, which is kind of like Monday. At long last, I was ready to take the first step toward becoming the almighty leader of the grim world. My army of two just wasn't going to cut it. No way. It was time to assemble my legion. Unfortunately, before I could start gathering that horde, I had to go to school. Today was the first day of class at Night Shadows Academy for the Grim and Dreadful. Yep, even the son of the Dark Lord who vanished has to go to school. No one gets out of it. Believe me, I've tried. But there's no special academy for future great and terrible leaders. Even if there was one, it would be really small since I'm the only kid the Dark Lord sired. No, I go to school with everyone else. And because I didn't want to show up alone, I met my best friend Augie before class. Wasn't hard to spot him. He's half orc, so he's a really wide friend. Actually, he's as wide as three warlock friends. Hi, Augie, I said, but he just nodded his head, which was no big surprise. Augie isn't the sort of guy who can focus on more than one thing. And he appeared to be locked in a minor scuffle with a gremlin. That thumb-sized thing was putting up an ogre-sized fight. He was tearing the threads out of Augie's pocket, which was sort of a bad idea. Because the gremlin was sitting in that same pocket. Now, my novel is illustrated by Marta, our amazing illustrator, and I'll preview some of these illustrations for you as I go. Back to the story. He's going to fall, I said. That little monster pulled out one more thread, Augie's pocket would burst open. Seriously, he's going to go splat when he hits the cobblestones. Augie shook his head. He was still trying to grab hold of the gremlin, but his enormous half-orc fingers were just too big to pinch the little guy. Augie, I raised my voice. I didn't see you in the courtyard this weekend. I said, you missed the brute list. Where are you? Oh, yeah, sorry about that, said Augie, still distracted by the gremlin. I found this little guy in the dungeons, and his leg was broken. So, I spent Saturday and sullen day helping him make a cast. I peered closer and saw that the gremlin's leg was indeed covered in a miniature cast made of very fine thread and some sort of goo, possibly earwax. I was all out of patience, so I reached over, pinched the gremlin between my thumb and forefinger, and dropped him into one of about a dozen other pockets that Augie had sewn into his tunic. You can't help it. They love to take things apart, said Augie, as he patted the little gremlin on the back. I can see that, I replied. Anyway, I've got news. I needed to talk about the Brute List and Operation Dark Lord. But the first bell rang before I could get in another word. School was about to start. Night Shadows, Academy for the Grim and Dreadful, occupies the 12th of the 13 great towers that surround the castle courtyard. But it's a really big courtyard, and our school is at the far side of it, so 
We had to hustle. Augie and I just made it through the door before the bell rang a second time and the gatekeeper, Mr. Knucklebottom, who's a troll, slammed the door shut. Trolls are natural gatekeepers. So if you're even a second late, he'll shut that door in your face and laugh. In fact, he still laughed at us. We were clearly running late and had to hurry up the steps. Night Shadows Academy is separate into three schools. The Grunt School sits on the bottom floor of the tower. That's where the little Grimmies learn the three R's. Raiding, ransacking, and racking. Last year, I graduated from the Grunt School. So I headed up to the second floor, which houses our secondary school, otherwise known as Middle Ages School. Curious what that Middle Ages school might look at? Here we go, there's a little portrait of our tower of night shadows. Augie is two years older than me, so we went our separate ways. Today, he started the eighth level of darkness, while I started the sixth. He ran off down a dimly lit corridor, and I went looking this way and that, searching for my first class. Luckily, I found it just before the third and final bell rang, announcing the start of the school day. I settled into the only open seat as Professor Blackwood wrote the word history on the board, which seemed kind of unnecessary given that history was the first class on the schedule. It was also written on the door and on our textbook, which was titled History, Things That Happened in the Past by Andronica Dyer, historian. But the class was half filled with ogres, so maybe it was a good idea to remind us of the course name. Blackwood was a tall fellow, and he wore powerful wire-rimmed glasses that made his eyes look twice their normal size. He asked us to open our history books and turn to chapter 897. It was titled, Legacy of the Dark Lords, The Disappearance of Abaddon Balgarath and the Fate of His Successor. I didn't like the way successor was written in quotes. Also, as I skimmed the introduction, I found two or three paragraphs dedicated to the dreadful state of the grim folk. And in them, the author used words like dire and hopeless to describe our future. There was even a section titled, Will the Grim Folk Survive? I wanted to shout, yes! But yelling at my history book would have only earned me a round of laughter. I wanted to keep a low profile after the whole brute list debacle. So I just sat there and waited for the professor to speak. After twice clearing his throat, Blackwood said, we're going to learn our Dark Lord history this year. Wick, will you please describe Dark Lord Day? I groaned. Everyone assumes I'm an expert on my parents, but I was only two years old when they vanished. I don't remember anything about them or the battle or anything else, but I've heard the story about a thousand times, so I went ahead and I repeated it. On Dark Lord Day, we celebrate the Dark Lord who vanished, my dad, Abaddon Balgaroth the Terrible, the 79th Dark Lord of the Grimhold, and the last in a line that stretches back 1,011 years. A decade ago, when the Fair Folk attacked the dark and intimidating but otherwise peaceful Grimhold, my dad fought the ultra-vain, super-pompous leader, the good wizard Galorian. The battle raged for three weeks, and in the final confrontation, the great spellcasters met in the throne room of the Grimhold. Galorian struck the Dark Lord and Dark Lady, aka my mom and dad, with his enchanted sword of seemingly unquestionable truth. It made my parents vanish into a cloud of smoke. Only my dad's scepter remains, which was a good thing. My parents had put a piece of their magic in it, so even though their bodies were struck down, their spirits survived. Galorian had won the fight, but his victory lasted 
about two seconds. Then I told him how Glorian blundered into my dad's throne of black and broken glass and cut himself into a million pieces. It's my favorite part of the story, so I may have gotten a little carried away with the details. I described every inch of the throne. I talked about the mounds of broken glass and the glistening steps that led up to them. The braziers that swirled with white hot flame and the lava that spilled out of them. Then I went on about Glorian and how he slipped on the glassy stairs. I think his arm landed in a pool of lava and his head was never found, I added with a shrug. Yes, Glorian was a bit of a klutz, said Blackwood, cackling. Then he asked the class what happened next and Rat's worm finger, our resident Dark Lord wannabe, immediately raised his hand. Apparently, Rat's great, 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 not sure how many greats, but I know it's a lot, grandfather was a Dark Lord. I know this little fact because Rats never fails to mention it. Honestly, I'll say something like, what a grim day. And Rats will reply, yes, I think every day must have looked like this one when my grandfather was the Dark Lord. Seriously, he talks about the guy like he ruled yesterday. But that Dark Lord reigned over the lands four or five hundred years ago, and he was just their in-law. Still, Rats and his dad act like they're next in line to be the Dark Lord if I ever kick it or that wall of flame fries me. I'll be honest here, I've heard there are plenty of ways to die on the quest to the Chamber of Mystery. Everyone knows this, and I'm sure Rats has pictured me in each of them. But our tradition says I get the first crack at the chamber since I'm the heir to the Dark Throne. However, if I fail, it's pretty much open season. Anyone who can gather an army and summon powerful, breathtaking feats of magic can give the quest a shot. But remember, I get to do it first. So I threw my hand up again just to keep rats from answering. Blackwood called on him anyway. And for no reason at all, rats walked to the front of the class as if he were the professor. Rats even cleared his throat twice exactly as Blackwood had done. The battle was over, Rat said. Then he straightened the folds of his robe just to get everyone's attention. Our grim and wise ruler had vanished, leaving only a cloud of smoke in his scepter, and the wizard king was dead. Both sides had lost, so we called a truce. That was the end of the fighting, and since then, We've had peace and happiness throughout the known world, but we all miss the Dark Lord who vanished and the mayhem he wrought. In case you're curious about that class, about Blackwood and rats, here they are. Wonderful illustration from Marta, our illustrator. Rats went on about the farmer, former Dark Lord, reminding everyone how great it was when we had one, how awesome and how powerful he was. I swear, Rats looked right at me when he mentioned how the Dark Lord could make lava flow from the sky, just to remind me that I couldn't do that stuff. At least he didn't know about the elf attacks. Gory had kept them a secret, or I'm certain Rats would have said something about it, just to make our situation sound even more hopeless. Still, he did his best to paint a bad picture. The dwarves have a king, and the elves have a great lord. The fair folk live in harmony. But the goblin queen can't walk into the same chamber as the ogre chieftain without starting a fight. Nowadays, we've got no one to unite us. I thought that last part was a bit of an insult. After all, I was the Dark Lord's heir. The grim folk might not have a leader, but hey, I was working on it. In fact, I wanted to start Operation Dark Lord today, but I still didn't have a plan. And Rats was just making my situation worse by talking about all those awe-inspiring things I didn't know how to do. It was time to silence him. I needed to tell the class that we had a grim leader, or at least the makings of one. I threw up my hand again. 
Unfortunately, the great and terrible bell rang, and the Grimmies rushed out of the room before Blackwood had a chance to call on me. And I think I'll stop there. If you're curious what happens next, I've been reading this novel on my Instagram Live channel, M. Johnston Author, or you can check out the book. I hope you enjoyed this chapter, and I hope you'll check out the rest of it. I'm Mike Johnston, and this has been Confessions of a Dark Lord. Thanks. Bye now.